Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going to do a breakdown guide for Rui. We're going to go over all of his buttons, his specials, and really talk about the strategy of this really, really unique character. And then of course at the end we'll go over combos, and I'll leave a timestamp if you want to skip to that. So, Rui is very unique. As a character in general, obviously he's a demon, so he's very different to any of the demon slayers. But he also has a very different playstyle to even Akaza and all the demon slayers, because he likes to play from a distance. Or... A, a, even to say he can play a distance, which is a lot, something a lot of people can't even say. He has a lot of projectiles, he can like do full combos from long range. Which is not something many people can do. He can get a lot of damage uh, from long range, but from close range a lot of people think he's kind of weak, because you know, his specials do really small damage, like look how little damage all of his projectiles do, so little, how could he possibly get damage? Don't worry. We'll talk about it, and we'll get to it in the video. Okay, so to start off, usually I say let's start with the boring stuff, but for Rui, his normals are not boring. They are, because, you know, he's unique and he uses these web strings for his attacks, they reach extremely far, like, around this distance, I'll be able to hit Tanjiro with my, oops, with my, like, step attack string. Oh. So, like, his normals are basically projectiles in themselves, and even when he's attacking the opponent, Look how far I am when I'm actually doing my combo on the opponent. That's ridiculous. Tanjiro's normal attacks would not reach at that distance. Most sword characters' attacks will not reach at that distance unless they do, you know, their step and attack. But my step and attack reaches way further than theirs. So that gives you a lot of advantage when it comes to, you know, pushback or neutral situations where, you know, you're even to each other. But when you push back, my normal attack hits the opponent. So if the opponent pushes me back or I push them back, I still have way more advantage than they do. Because my regular button, not even my step-in button, can reach way before theirs can. I don't even have to do the step-in to be get, become, like, close enough to do a combo. Because I can just do my combo from all the way over here. So that's a really, really powerful tool and thing to keep in mind when you're playing Rui. Is that you are an awesome spacing character. You can, you can fight from over here. You don't even need to get any range of sword characters attacks. And that also get, allows you to like, you know, um, charge up in the opponent or if the opponent's charging on you or doing something like a water wheel or someone's like charging dive kick or something. You can just mash buttons and you're honestly gonna have a good chance of hitting through them. Cause when you just mash buttons, you've got this whole wall of attacks of attacks in front of you. Here, let me go sideways. But like you can see it's ginormous and so far in front of him. They are just such powerful tools. So, uh, yeah. And they also do pretty decent damage for regular attacks. Those are all of his attack strings, and then his down one is... So yeah, they all do pretty decent damage, and that's why most of the combos you do with Rui that are high damage are going to consist mostly of normal, something like this. Oops. So that did nearly 4,000 damage for only two bars, and because it consisted mostly of normals, it did more damage with Rui. And having a combo consist mostly of normals is also really powerful, because whenever your opponent tries to escape from it, you can dash off to them and chase them down. So, yeah. His normals are actually really powerful, and that's something that I don't usually talk about with characters, but yeah, his are very relevant and very, very important to know that he can reach so damn far with his buttons, it's ridiculous. They're basically projectiles in themselves. So, yeah. His tilt attack in the air, or his regular attack string in the air, um, kind of average, you know, you can do some attacks. You do, he does push them kind of far away, so sometimes you do have to do your, um, like, tilt attack to get in if they're quite far. So, you know, when you, like, hold a movement button and then do your attack so it reaches further. If you don't know, so this is the normal one, or if I'm holding movement, it'll, it'll go further. Like that. That wasn't me walking. That was just... Oops. See, look, if I do a step forward and then I do my standing one, it'll look like that. But if I do the tilt one, it'll look like this. How he does that little extra step forward. So if you do that in your combos, it just lets you reach further away opponents. And that can help you get it off of this. See, even that was a lot of damage. Um, his tilt attack in the air is actually really, really good as well. It has an awesome hitbox with all those, like, webs that come down to the ground. It reaches from really far away, and it's super safe because the first part of it that does the attack with the awesome hitbox doesn't actually have his hurt box on it, so he's not launching himself at the opponent. He's launching all these webs from so damn far away. It has an amazing hitbox. And then after they hit them, he charges in and gets his combo. His tilt attack... 
also very powerful. It has decent range. Actually, not awesome range, but it has a very large hitbox and it stays there for a while, so there's a chance that your opponent will accidentally run into it. Or if they do a yellow attack, because yours is kind of slow and has more hits, there's a good chance that if they do their yellow, uh, their um, armor attack and do your, you do your armor attack, yours will come out last and you'll be the one that's allowed to get a combo. So, very powerful stuff, and also because it's got such a huge hitbox, it can catch people that are trying to jump or sidestep backwards or do something to escape, so, yeah. Very good yellow attack. I mean, I'm an attack. I keep saying yellow based off my hero one's justice too. <laughs> um, his grab is also quite good because of all the strings he launches out. It has pretty decent range, and you know, because he doesn't launch himself forward as much, just like his regular normals, it makes it a lot more safe. So I can do it from around here, and if the opponent presses the button from over there, it wouldn't actually hit me, but then my grab would hit them. So that's pretty cool. So unlike someone like um, Zenitsu, who like runs into the opponent and then grabs them. Um, I can grab them from a little bit of a distance away, so I avoid getting hit by things, so that's pretty powerful. And also it launches the opponent very far away, which is obviously important for his game, because he wants to be doing this. Okay, and now, that's, I think that's all of his normal attacks, let's go into his specials. So his standing special is his web toss. So his, just his basic projectile, his fireball that he launches across the screen. Now he can press this three times, and the third hit will launch the opponent, um, like, it'll knock them in the air and knock them away. So if you're wanting to make some distance between you and your opponent, say you're ending a combo like this. Oops. Oops. <laughs> so you're ending a basic combo. You can end it in your web tosses to launch the opponent far away so that you can get some of your zoning started from a distance. However, each versions of the web toss do have their own use. So you're not always going to just be wanting to do all three. Because doing all three kind of, you know, ends your turn, it's over. Yeah, you get a bit more damage than if you just did one, but honestly, Damage isn't what you're really looking for when you're just throwing these projectiles out on your own. You're always throwing them out for the utility. So maybe you're throwing the single one out. If you throw a single projectile out, because it travels a lot slower and has a lot less recovery, you can throw it out and then dash behind it. And depending on how far you are, you can actually get a combo from that, which is really powerful. And then build some meter back after you get a hard knockdown. So that's really cool, and it lets you get a free run in because you have this web slowly flying at the opponent. Um, you have to be quite far for it to actually combo, but it is still a really useful tool to know because the opponent has to block this and then block your run in. So they're blocking a lot of things, so the guard's gonna break, and it just, you know, keeps the opponent on their toes because they can't just guard your things because that'll let you come in for free, and then maybe, you know, as you're running in behind it. Uh, whoops. You know, I'm over here, I throw out my projectile, I run out behind it, and then I actually go in for a grab instead of attacking. You know, it just leads to a lot of awesome pressure when you have your opponent really scared of this web toss. So they think they have to block your run because you're running in straight behind it, go for a throw. Very powerful stuff. Now, the second throw of the web toss is useful for cancelling into one of your um, cool uh, sidekick gauge special moves, because obviously demons don't have um, sidekicks. I'll talk about this special moves after. But because this special move only really works on grounded opponents, you don't want to do it after all three hits, because then you don't get your cool combo afterwards because the opponent um, falls in the air. So you can do two hits and then hit confirm one of them hitting, or even two of them hitting, and then if you see one of your projectiles hits the opponent, I can do this special move, and oops, I was a little bit late there, but you have to wait to see if the first one hits, I'm watching, oh it hit, I go for the special move, then I can run in and get a combo. So that's very powerful. So doing two of them is very good for hit confirming into your full screen combo tool. And doing three of them, obviously you just get a little bit more damage. You get the knockback, so you can, you know, knock them far away. You can also cancel the third one into an ultimate, which does um, kind of ridiculous damage. Well, you can cancel any of them into an ultimate, but you, like the third one, you can easily combo off of, because, you know, I'm just walking around, I've thrown out my projectiles. Oh, that hit. Oh, let me go for an ultimate. It's the easiest hit confirm in the world for some pretty heckin' big damage. Just take a look at this. That is wild for hit confirming a single projectile. Like, I'm just throwing out my projectiles, like, 
Oh, it hit? Let me go for my ultimate. It's a super easy hit confirm. If you miss that, I don't know, but you, you deserve to not get that damage. It's ridiculous that he can like basically kill the opponent with one projectile if he has an ultimate. That's probably the most overpowered, overpowered thing about Rui. And obviously he can cancel um, any of his like web tosses into any of his other special moves. Um, but you're not really going to be cancelling it into Threat Barrier unless you've, you're scared and you've, you've thrown all three out. Um, pretend Hinokami Tanjiro, you know, he's running around, like, dashing, and, like, he's dodged the first two, and I'm standing here throwing all three projectiles, and I think he might punish me because he's, you know, running around dodging them, and, you know, if I'm throwing all three, he can get in on me while I'm throwing them. But I can just cancel that into my invincible special move, and as he tries to run in on me or possibly punish me, I can just throw out this invincible special move and catch him off guard. But then, obviously, I can also throw out my second special. And that can cancel back into these, and, you know, it's just basically another projectile. So now let's talk about it. His Thread Dash. Another projectile. It doesn't reach full screen, or at least the first one doesn't travel as far as the second, the two on the sides. But this is obviously an awesome projectile for opponents that are trying to sidestep and dodge your regular projectiles. You know, you throw out two, they're trying to dodge... All your projectiles that you're throwing at them, you know, your regular webs, you throw one, I throw one, I throw one, I throw two, I throw three. Like, it's, it's very scary stuff. So they're just going to be, you know, dashing, trying to sidestep and then dodge them and then run in on you. But if they try and do that and you throw out this one, you're going to catch their sidestep or their sideways walk. It's, it's very, very strong stuff. And then because this, all of his special moves are special cancelable into each other, he can cancel this into the three projectile tosses and that much isn't much damage on its own but when you consider being able to hit confirm that into this that's where the damage starts to get scary so it's basically just another tool in his arsenal it's not as useful as the web toss because the web toss um I, I even forgot to mention the regular like projectile throw it's a lot more advantageous on hit and block than the thread dash. So if I throw out my web toss here, I can actually get a combo off of it. Oops, depending on how close I am. It's at a very specific distance because it has to travel a bit. But if you get a combo where you are a little bit far away from the opponent, you get some attacks. See, so you can actually combo with that because it has so much hit advantage. And that means it's also really, really good for resets because the opponent is stuck in hit stun for a lot more longer when you do the single hit of web toss so I use it a lot for my resets if I'm doing something off of my armored attack I'll go for a reset like that or I can go for a reset where I just go for more attacks and we'll talk about that more when we get into the, re the combo portion but yeah just keep in mind that the web toss is really good for resets as well whereas the thread dash is not as useful in that way because it's not as advantageous on hit or on block so it's more of just a pr projectile to catch the opponent off guard, um, trying to like sidestep and things, and you just catch them trying to avoid your other projectiles. Um, and a quick note on both of these projectiles, they do both re-stand the opponent, so if I have my opponent in the air, that will re-stand him as it is. So both of these put the opponent in the um, back on their feet, which means they're both really good tools for resets, but as I said, the web toss is far more useful. Now, his uh, guard special is his DP. It's invincible for a very long time, even though it doesn't really matter that he's invincible because he's got this massive hurt box of webs around him, so there's no way the opponent's going to manage to attack you unless, you know, they try and do something with armor and then your invincibility is going to way outbeat them because you've got all these hits and all that invincibility. And when you hit the opponent with it, you can actually get a combo for free off of it, which is pretty awesome. Uh, when you hit it raw, you're not going to get too much. Like, you're really not getting that much because it's a red combo and it's a very long animation. Maybe go for a reset or do something like that. But basically, you're not going to get too much damage off of this. You can do something like that. But st still not much damage. But it is really useful if you're wanting to do some more simple combos and you land this. It is handy that you can just combo off of it for free and get something like this. So that's really useful. And it's awesome just knowing that he can combo off of his DP, his invincible special move, for free. That's always a super powerful tool, because if you know you land this, you can go for your ultimate, and it's just super free, super amazing. 
Super awesome. Yeah, even though he can dash cancel it on hit, he cannot dash cancel it on block because that would make it so overpowered. So he does have to land through the whole recover animation. I was mashing dash there. So, you know, it's very punishable if he misses it or if it's blocked. It's only cancelable into a dash if it's on hit. Okay. And as I said, it's really handy if you're cancelling, you know, your projectiles. If you think your opponent's going to punish you for something you're doing, you can cancel any of your projectiles into this, and if your opponent goes in for a punish, you know, Tanjiro's about to hit me, I throw this out, I hit him, because I'm invincible, and I can get a little bit of a teensy combo after this. And then, like, one hit into an ultimate, and then blah 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 blah, I win. <laughs> and so now for his unique special moves, which are actually using his sidekick gauge, as you can see in the top left of the screen. If I just tap the sidekick button, he does this special move, and if I do the sidekick button plus a tilt of my movement stick, he'll do this special move. So basically he just gets two extra special moves, however do be wary that these ones, unlike, you know, your projectiles and stuff, it builds a lot slower, the sidekick meter, and when he uses those, he's also forfeiting his ability to break out of combos, because he needs his two bars of sidekick gauge to break out of combos, but if you're using these special moves a lot, you're not going to be able to break out of combos. So it is a really interesting mind game that you have to think about, uh, whether you use this meter or not, because it's basically like using sidekicks for a combo, because you're using your sidekick gauge and forfeiting your combo breaker. So. That said, you have to be a little more use, uh, careful when you're using them, because you know, and you can't just stand still to be build it back really fast. It just has to build back slowly with time. That said, the two special moves he has is his standing one, and yeah, let's talk about it first. This is the most useful one I found. Um, one, it does a lot more damage than any of his special moves, like 1,400 damage compared to 600, or like 400, 300. It's a lot of damage. And it's very, very easy to um, use it to hit confirm off of his projectiles. If I throw out these two projectiles, I, oh, I saw that it hits, I can cancel into that. And it has a huge, like, long knockdown on it, because the opponent's put into a crumple state. You have tons of time to, you know, run up or dash up, do whatever, to get a combo. And if you want to use it in combos, which I don't suggest because it's a bit expensive and doesn't give him far more damage than he normally gets, but if you do want to use it in a combo, you can use that super long knockdown to get something like this. So, can be useful, but I don't recommend it, and we'll talk more about combos when we get to that. However, I do really re recommend it when you're using it to convert off of these projectiles, because, you know, normally you're gonna get, like, maybe at max, you know, 8,000, 800 damage. Maybe if you do a few more cancels, you can get a little bit more than that, like if you're getting... You know, you can get some damage, but I just spent three bars for that little damage from full screen, or I can just spend one bar and use this to hit confirm and go in for a full combo that does pretty damn decent damage. So that's something you really have to keep in mind. Now the tilt version of this special move is uh, this, which is pretty crazy. It's like a, oh, it's, <laughs> it's like a version of. Um, Rokodaki's traps, but on steroids. It's far better. It leads to... Um, it doesn't actually lead to red combos. So that makes it even better. It has a way bigger hitbox. Obviously, it's a little more obvious. The opponent isn't going to run into it as readily, but because it's so much bigger, the opponent can't just run through it, and they get hit by it instantly. So it's really, really useful um, against opponents doing anything. If I turn my opponent onto an actual opponent... Like, if he does anything, okay, maybe the CPU is not programmed to avoid traps. But like, if he dashes or does a water wheel, he gets hit by it, which is not something that Rokodaki uh, has the privilege of being able to do. And you can get a combo with it, but you have to do... Oh, nice. You have to be pretty quick with your dashing, and a lot of the time if they hit it with it too quickly, like, they will get hit by it. But you can combo with it more easily if you use your projectiles. You just kind of... Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to show what the damage can look like, Tanjiro. Oh my god. But, yeah. It's just a souped up version of Rokodaki's Traps. Which makes sense because it's a bit more expensive. And if you get a combo with it, it can look something like this, but you know. Um, or something like this. Yeah. 
Like, yeah, you can get some pretty damn decent damage off of that thing. But, uh, yeah, using those two in con conjunction with these two projectiles leads to some pretty ridiculous screen control. So I can throw out this massive trap that does make him jump backwards, which is also very important and Urokodaki doesn't do. So he jumps backwards, so it's kind of an evasive tool as well. He jumps back and put this massive thing in front of him. It doesn't last for as long as Urokodaki's traps, just mind you. That's one significant downside of it. If it pops that out, you know, I throw out all these projectiles, massive screen control. I can hit confirm any of them with this other awesome special move that I have that uses my sidekick gauge. I just have so much ridiculous screen control for a game like this that barely has any projectiles. And um, by the way, with this special move, it is actually quite unsafe. If the opponent blocks it, it is not plus at all, it's very minus. Um, you know, but if you're doing it full screen, they're not going to be able to punish you. But even if you're around here, the opponent can get a dash in and punish you kind of often. So you have to make sure you're not really throwing it out in neutral. You can if you want, but I think it's far better if you're using it to combo up with your regular projectiles. Oh, that sequence is hitting. Let me just dash in for a little bit of a combo and get some damage. Pretty cool. And he can't do either of these special moves in the air, just by the way. He can't do his DP in the air. He can just do his, you know, his basic projectiles, and they act, like, basically the exact same. So, yeah, that's Rui and his special moves. Don't think there's too much else to mention. Yeah, if you want to see his, um... He can just break out of combo just like a normal character can. It just looks like he jumps out himself. So he just, you know, doesn't need friends. <laughs> so, now that we've gone over all of his buttons and like what, you know, you're supposed to use them for, all of his special moves and things, let's go over his combos and his, you know, overall strategies. But mainly combos and resets, because that's the cool stuff that I know people like seeing. So, a basic B&B &B combo with Rui. Or maybe not basic, but the best one I find to be a good balance of consistency and good damage is this combo. Oops. Consistency, he says, as he messes it up twice. Sorry, I can't talk and do combos at the same time. So this does around 4,000 damage, 3,900 damage. Keep in mind it is on Hidokami Tanjiro, so it'll be a little less on other characters. But uh, yeah, that's really good damage for a like a two-bar combo that is pretty consistent, and obviously he can keep it leaderless if he wants to do something like this. So that is really good damage for a single bar, 3,300 damage, and he gets a hard knockdown, and with a hard knockdown, you know, he can run away and start throwing out his projectiles, and that's really good. And if you're wondering why I end a lot of my combos in the web toss and not my cage thing that does more damage. For some reason in combos, the web toss tends to do a lot more damage when you're um, ending combos with it than your thread barrier. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm ending my combos in web toss. And it's also really good to end your combos in this because it pushes the opponent far away so you get to go in for your projectiles and do, you know, do your game. Where you can zone from distance and get your combos from a distance. And get your pressure from a distance. So yeah, I'll just do that combo once more because I feel like it's pretty <laughs> pretty important, basically his best combo. Just do four attacks into a regular attack in the air, into his tilt attack in the air, to a full attack string, and then cancel that into his um, web throwy thingies. And the damage varies based on how many hits of different things here, but it's pretty good. About 4,000 damage, but maybe about 3,700 damage on characters that aren't Hinokami Tanjiro. So, uh, yeah, 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 pretty good. Now, if this combo is being a bit inconsistent for you, you can also go for things like this with this up combo, but do essentially the same route. And you can go for the down combo. Actually, you can actually make it a little bit more damaging by doing his, um, instead of just doing the two attacks, if you do the attack into tilt attack. So not this. If you do the tilt attack, it does a little bit more damage. So if I do a combo like this... Another awesome thing about his um, massive buttons is that when he does combos and things on a juggled opponent, they don't fall out of it like as much as with sword characters. Like with sword characters, you have to be really careful when you time your juggles, but really, you can just mash and it's super easy. So as you saw there, that's another way he can do his combo, or he can end it with the um, um, with a the projectiles to do a little bit more damage. He can also use his um, throw barrier for one bar combos. But because it takes a little bit longer, the opponent sometimes gets knocked back. But you know, 
that's often a thing that you want, so that's pretty decent damage. May as well go for that combo if you're finding the jump cancel combos a little inconsistent. Maybe, you know, the timing's a little bit hard online or whatever. And, you know, you're wanting to make sure you get a proper hit confirm into your ultimate or whatever. <laughs> Unlike I did just then, and <laughs> completely mess that up. But, uh, yeah, if you're getting a, a shortened combo, per se, off of your... What's that? Armored attack, your strong attack? I like to go for a reset. If you're wanting to go for damage, uh, don't. You can't really. There's there's not much damage to go for. So do that combo that does, you know, that's still really good damage for a, a strong a strong attack. So you do a bunch of attacks into your, you have to be quick, and cancel it into just one throw of your web toss. And that leads to a reset. And the opponent is, you know, negative on your face, so you can go for a throw, or you can go for a um, more attacks. And it's just a really good reset tool. I can even put the opponent onto being real and show you that it's quite hard for them to escape. So even if the opponent sidesteps backwards, or sometimes even if they sidestep si um, sideways at the wrong time, they can't escape this combo. Oops, you have to do you do have to be quick or else they do fall out of the combo. So even if they summon support, or if they sidestep backwards, or sidestep from um, sideways even sometimes, they can't be in the air. But it is just a very good reset. And obviously if they block that, then blah 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 blah. And if they decide to not block, and you decide to go for the, you know, the attack version of the reset, you'll do a lot of damage. Oops. Okay, now if you get a tilt attack off on the opponent, a uh, combo I suggest doing is this. It's a reset, but it does- oops, not if you screw it up, you do have to be quite quick. It's a reset, but it does a lot of damage, and you're really not going to get much more damage in this anyways. So go for that, and then you can go in for a grab, or you can go in for another attack. The grab portion is actually really, really um, surprisingly consistent, even if the opponent um, dashes backwards, or sometimes even dashes sideways at the wrong time. They're gonna get hit by that grab. It's a very powerful reset. And if you go for the throw portion, I mean, if you go for the just like regular attack portion, obviously you can get a lot of damage. Um, that wasn't even the optimal combo, but as you can see, they decide to not block once. You get a lot of damage, and they basically die unless they break the combo. So going for the throw option is really good there. Yeah, you make your opponent scared to scared to do stars, and then blah, 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 and then they get hit by things because you go for a uh, attack reset. Um, obviously, you can do a similar thing off of his aerial combo, but you do have to shorten it a bit um, because the aerial combo has a little more like time. So you have to do something like this, and then go for the throw. But yeah, because his throw has such an awesome hitbox, it's very hard for him to escape that throw. It's, they have to jump backwards or like sidestep properly to like really early, so very good reset. And because his web toss free stands, he can do that kind of reset off of any of his normal combos that we were doing already. Or, you know, off of this combo that we were doing, you don't even need to do the, it doesn't matter that it restands. So we'll go for something like this. Go for a throw. I can actually do a little bit more damage because I'm not doing the three tosses, I can do something like this. I can go for all of these attacks. Oops. Okay, maybe not all of them. Use that one of the aerial attacks. There we go. So you get a little bit more damage, and you can go for the strike throw reset there. And you can also get this even if you're doing the um, slightly easier, like, aerial versions of this combo. And catch the opponent falling down. If not, that would probably be even more consistent on hitting the opponent, because a lot of people aren't blocking or, like, expecting to go for a throw when they're in the middle of the air. So that's, that's pretty powerful. Now, for... we went over red combos, we went over some resets. 
If you're getting a combo from far away, you can do stuff like this. So as I was talking about before when I was talking about these special moves, you can very easily hit confirm his projectiles into his this special move. And then you can get a combo or something like this. And get some decent damage that way. Actually it might be more damage if you just go for the web tosses again. Yeah. But you're getting pretty decent damage off of a full screen projectile, which is not something anyone else has in this game. Or did. Or you can go for a little bit of a more damaging combo like the uh whoops. Depending on how far you are from the opponent as well will also affect what combos you can get. Oops. If you're really far, you can actually get this combo, and you cancel that off with two hits, and then go boop, bam, bam. You get 3,000 damage, and then, because that's a hard knockdown, you can build back a bunch of meter, and, you know, it makes it basically free. Um... Also, you know, if you want to really stay full screen and get full screen combos, obviously you can do stuff like this. And basically whatever combo you do of stuff there, you need to get around 3,600, 3,700. But I don't recommend using this twice in your combo, because that is using a lot of support gauge that you cannot just be throwing out willy-nilly. Um, I only suggest using it like once in a combo, and if you do want to stay full screen, then you can do stuff like this if you'd like, but I think it makes far more sense to just do the two projectiles and then run in after you get this. And you can also keep this free if you just you know, do a down combo. Keep it easy, keep it cheap. So you build back your bars, whatever you like. And something that is kind of ridiculous with Rui is his ultimate, and combos into ultimate are so easy for Rui because of this activation that is full screen anywhere. So as I said before, one of Rui's best combos is actually just do a few projectiles into his ultimate. <laughs> and that does ridiculous damage. Ridiculous damage for literally just hitting a single projectile on the opponent and then cancelling into an ultimate. Most people probably wouldn't even break that combo because they're like, oh, oops, I just got hit by a projectile, then boom. They lost like 70% of their life. It's ridiculous. And that just means, like, he won't get as much damage, but he can also, you know, do combos into an ultimate off of his regular attacks. You do have to be careful, though, because the slowdown, the, like, the countdown still goes down while he's in the... Like activating the ultimate, so you do have to make sure your combo is a little bit shorter. You can do something like this if you want to switch it up. Oops. Combo dry. So basically, I like to save my ultimate meter for doing those conversions um, off of the roll projectiles because that does the most damage and it's the most con like normal hits for Rui. If you happen to hit single projectile, boom. Your opponent's nearly dead, so I definitely recommend saving your meter for that. Or saving it for a boost, because that's also very useful for Rui, because, you know, when you're throwing out all these projectiles and combling them into each other, you're using a lot of meter, so if you boost, you know, you get all your meter back, and then you can throw out a bunch more meter, a bunch of projectiles a lot more willy-nilly than you would before, and then you can go to surge mode, and obviously you have unlimited meter. He actually doesn't have kind of ridiculous combos as everyone else does in surge mode, because his projectiles don't really do that much damage, or I mean his special moves in general. So like, he can get some kind of cool combos, but he's not going to do ridiculous damage. So mainly surge mode is just a, a means for him to like keep, you know, you're using his, all your specials, I keep throwing out all my stuff, I've done that, I want to go for a, bo a, a boost now, so that I get all my meter back and I can do some more zoning. Dash in, maybe I got a combo. And then, oh no, I'm out of meter again. I want to go into my surge mode. Now I have unlimited meter and I can zone to my heart's content. I can just constantly throw out projectiles. The opponent will be stuck there. I have armor on all of my projectiles. And then, you know, I could obviously get cancel into my ultimate at any time doing that. And basically it's just your zoner's dream because you can ke keep getting your meter back as long as you have meter. So, uh, yeah, I think that is basically all there is to say about Rui. He's a really unique character. He can get combos from full screen, which is not something many people can do. 
uh, he gets pretty decent damage, even though a lot of people say his damage is awful. He can get around 4,000 damage with two bars, which is nothing to laugh at. And, oh yeah, also, his guard pressure is also really good. And guard pressure along, alongside the fact that he has really good resets is really powerful. So if I have my opponent guarding, and I do this attack string, not only is my guard pressure really amazing, because my ridiculously long range normals, so even if I, my opponent pushes me away, so one push distance is this, all of my attacks are still hitting the opponent, so they can have to push me twice to get me out of their combos, which is very useful. So like, you know, my opponent pushes me, they still have to deal with these super far buttons, so they can't just like do a push into mash their buttons, or a push into like mash the DP or something, because, you know, my buttons are going to hit them first before they can do anything. So that's really awesome, so that makes his pressure really crazy. And also, using his web toss is really handy in his pressure, because it's advantage on block, just doing that one projectile. So not only is it good for resets, it's really good for pressure. So because that's plus on block, they're expecting you to do a button afterwards, you can go for a throw there, or you know, you can just go for your super long range buttons. And if the opponent tries to contest you around this distance when you're plus on block, like, they cannot. Your button is way faster than theirs, which is way faster, so you can do this where well, they definitely cannot fight against you doing that. And obviously, he can, you know, in the middle of doing all this pressure with all of his press frames and crazy hitboxes, he can always cancel into a grab, and then that launches the opponent full screen, and then that starts his zoning all over again. And if I, you know, do something to build my bar, you do have to be careful because you're using a lot of meter, that's why you want to save up for your, bar, uh, your boost and stuff to save your meter. You know, I throw out my projectiles, I can throw out my one projectile and dash it on him. And really melt his guard gauge. He's very good at that. And yeah, so he's got awesome pressure. He's got pressure from full screen. Like if I do something like this, cancel into this. And oh yeah, you actually can't cancel that on him, so maybe don't do that unless you're gonna break the opponent's guard with it. You know, doing all these projectiles into each other. The projectiles themselves don't do a lot of guard damage, as you can see, he blocked all of those and still didn't. So there's not too much for the opponent to worry about blocking these, but they do have to be careful if you're a smart replayer and you know you throw out a projectile and then you run behind them. So if I've gone like one, two, three, one, one, oops, sorry, uh, one, two, three, one, one, and then dash behind that one, I'm in on the opponent now, and now they're having to block all of my stuff. And if I dashed in on them one more time, their the guard is totally broken. So just be smart with how you're mixing the opponent up, because you know you can make them block from full screen, you can make them block grabs, and your resets are really amazing. And you can hit confirm any of these with your uh, sidekick special move. And on top of all that, you have this massive wall you can put on the screen to stop your opponent running into you. You're amazing at screen control. Make sure you're using all of your tools effectively. So, I hope this guide was useful to anyone wanting to play Rui. I hope to see a lot of, a few more people playing Rui, a lot of people playing Akaza. Please join Team Rui. He's an awesome character. Anyways, thanks for watching this long video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.